Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rob. And in this video, I wanna show you some cool tech I've been playing around with. It's called Poly and it works similar to Dream Textures, which I demoed in my last video, only this one actually works. If you recall, the results from Dream Textures were quite lackluster. We could ask it to generate a brick texture and the results would be barely passable. I do expect it to improve with time, but at the moment, it's just not quite there yet. On the other hand, Poly is superb right out the gate. If we type red bricks, we get red bricks. It also supports resolutions up to 8K and can automatically generate normal maps, height maps, and so on. It can generate up to six textures, which Dream Textures didn't even attempt to do. Poly is web-based, so it doesn't overwork your GPU. A link to the website can be found in the description. However, if you typically use a Chromium-based web browser like Chrome or Brave, I highly recommend you turn on hardware acceleration by going to settings. It'll require a relaunch. It's off by default on some Chromium-based browsers like Brave. If you don't turn it on, your CPU will spike like crazy and the website will come to a crawl. So if the website is moving really slow and all your fans come on, just double check that the hardware acceleration is on. All right, with that out of the way, for the remainder of this video, I wanna go over how you would implement this in your own workflow. Let's say we have a scenario. You're working on this house model for an upcoming AAA game. You've been painting the textures by hand, but you're running out of time and your boss is demanding this project right now. They want some sort of rock texture for the concrete, but you don't have enough time to open Photoshop or Substance Painter and create it from scratch. So what do you do? That's one situation where Poly can come in. If we go to their website, again, the link is in the description, and then head over to the editor, we have a few options. Quick generate, make patches, and upload image. Our boss didn't give us any reference images, so we have nothing to upload. Therefore, our only options are quick generate and make patches. Quick generate will generate a single image at one, two, four or 8K plus all the other maps with the click of a single button. It's much lower than the other options since it generates all the maps. And if you don't like what it generates, you'll have to click generate over and over again until it makes something you like. I personally find this process slower than making patches because nine times out of 10, you're not gonna like what it generates the first time and doing it again and again will take a lot of time. But if you're really pressed for time and the object you're texturing isn't gonna occupy a lot of screen real estate, then I could see this working in a pinch. However, if you've gotten yourself into that situation, you have bigger problems like the lack of time management skills. Make patches works well if you have more time to play around with it. It offers a lot more flexibility. It will generate four 512 by 512 images. If you don't like any of these, you can create four more easily. It doesn't waste time generating the other maps, so it's pretty quick for iterating. If you get one that you kinda like, but it's not 100%, you can create variations of that one until you're completely satisfied with it. Once you have one you're satisfied with, you can move on to the next step. And for completeness sake, if our boss had given us images, we could upload those and generate variations of them. But since we don't, let's just stick with the Make Patches tab for now. Another thing to note is you have this seat image that can help you when you don't know how to describe what you're looking for. Say you have an okay looking texture, but you want to see more options. You can do that with seat image. It's optional and I'm not going to use it for this demo, but I recommend playing around with it. All right, so back to the scenario. Our boss wants some sort of rock texture. So I'm going to type in rock comma high detail. I'm going to keep clicking generate until I find one I like. After only two iterations, I found this one that I think the boss would approve of. That took about 30 seconds. It used to take longer to open Photoshop. I need this pattern to be seamless, so that's the next step. Go down to the Make Seamless tab. You want to play around with the patches scale until it's looking good. If you zoom out, it'll create more content and detail around the edges. So if you're making something like cobblestone, it'll give you more pieces of cobblestone. If you don't like what it did, you can undo it with this back arrow at the top right. Once your patch is seamless, then they recommend you upscale it. By the way, everything I'm doing is on the free version. The paid version is only $10 per month and allows you to upscale to 8K and it gives you a lot more options for the PBR maps. I assume more options will appear as time goes on. So it's a pretty good bang for your buck right now. I could see indie game devs really loving something like this. All right, I'm getting a little off topic. Anyway, once it's upscaled, we can now generate our PBR maps. The free version has four material types to choose from. These will tell the algorithm a little bit about how you want it to generate the maps. You can only generate three types of maps for the free version, but it's plenty to get you started. It can do color, normal, and displacement. The paid version unlocks ambient occlusion, roughness, and metalness. Once you've selected what you need, click generate PBR maps. Once it's done, you can preview it on a few different shapes. I think it looks acceptable, so I'm gonna click download. And now it's just a matter of setting up the material in Blender. So head over to Blender and create a new material, and then add the image textures as you normally would. I assume you have some experience if you're watching this video. If not, just be sure to add a normal map node for the normal map, and you'll have to plug the displacement into a displacement node like this. 
Remember, displacement only works with cycles, and you'll have to turn on an option in the material. This option only appears after cycles is enabled. But do you know what is always enabled? The sponsor of this video, Poly. They're not paying me to say any particular thing, but after I learned about their product, I really found it useful, and I figured you guys would like it too, since you all seem to really enjoy my last video on AI generation. Like I said, the service only runs for $10 a month, and that gives you complete access with the ability to generate up to 8K textures with six different PBR maps. Check them out in the video description. That's all for now. Have a good one, and take care.